This is a 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon 4x4. Today, we're with Apple Autos in beautiful Shakopee, Minnesota, where they sell fine Jeep, Ram, Dodge, and Chrysler products. We'd like to thank them for loaning us this awesome Jeep Gladiator for the day. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, two guys, guys in a ride. ride. And today, Nathan, tell the folks what we're taking a look at. Oh, we're here today with a 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon 4x4. Yes, sir. -y. But say, before we get started, if you'd like to keep up to date with all the new cars, trucks, SUVs, and you'd like to know about all the cool technology, and you'd like cool collector car stories, take a moment to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification at the top so you never miss a video. That's right. So what do you say, Nathan? Oh boy. Yeah. Let's, let's go, go for a ride. ride. <laughs> All right. So here we are in the 2020 Gladiator Rubicon Edition. Woo! Take it right off. So uh, in, in, in this particular uh, model that we have, uh, there's I'm not in a... the back seat. <laughs> He's in the back seat. <laughs> Never ride in the back seat. Sorry, Nathan. Go ahead. I tried to get him in the bed, but he wouldn't go that far. <laughs> go to bed? Uh, yeah. There you go. Um, but there is not a side step on here, so you're really going to want the grab handles. And if you're uh, packaging, packaging this thing and you're ordering it, I, I would suggest side steps. I mean, it is a tall climb, but I was able to get in fairly easily just with the grab handle as well. Just would be a, a, a preference. So as far as uh, easy to park, well, you're not going to get much easier than this vehicle because other than having an auto park system, which it doesn't, um, you have front and rear cameras and you have rear uh, parking sensors. And it's got a tight turning circle. Yeah. So you can, you want to pull in frontwards into a parking stall, you can use your front camera to see it. Backing up, same way. It's got uh, dynamic guidelines both on front and rear cameras. Um, so not an issue now overall the ride i'm surprised i it's much more comfortable this has got those big uh, what size are the tires on 33 here? inch 33 it does not feel like it i mean we're uh, we're on a pavement right now but um it doesn't feel like you're on some monstrous you know off-road capable vehicle all right so i'm gonna pull over here and let lot rob drive and uh Okay, now I'm not going to let him drive. I just wanted to hear him say that. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. You know, it's got a pretty decent acceleration for such a... It's 5,000 pounds. Yeah, it's And, heavy. you know, it's an off-road vehicle, but that V6 has some pretty good grunt to it. So, you know, you can't really complain about that. No. You know, and it does have all the safety features that you expect in most modern cars. It's got the adaptive cruise, it's got the hill descent, descent. Uh, it's got uh, lane mitigation, it's got cross detection alert, yeah, blind spot rear, monitoring, rear sensing, automatic uh, forward braking. And you, you know, you, you, uh, it's got cameras front and rear, you know, that are trail cameras, but you can use them locally and, and you know, in parking and stuff around. So, a lot of good safety features on it as well so it's it's a pretty good package um sound and quietness you know you can tell you got some air sound and noise coming through but then again all the doors are capable of coming off and the roof panels so <laughs> for it to be an open air pickup truck if that's what you want and that's a really cool thing to have you really can't fuss or complain that you've got a little bit of outside noise coming in because all these panels come off. So that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. But I'm sure that in the wintertime, you know, they're all nicely insulated, so it's going to keep you plenty warm. So it shouldn't be any issue about that. I like the fit and finish. I like the steering wheel and mice uh, padded thick steering wheel. Uh, and of course, it's heated. Of course, everybody knows yep. that by now, if you watch this channel, that's my favorite. So uh, nicely done. I like it. It's comfortable. The, uh, as I, I've got plenty of room back here, plenty of leg space. Seats are comfortable. 
Um, I like that the armrest is elevated. Plenty of uh, headroom. Um, you know, watch to the end of the video to find out what our favorite things are. You'll see those and uh, understand uh, why we actually do like this vehicle so much. So right now, coming up, my outside review, and just right after that, Nathan's interior review, and we're also cutting a separate video of the technology that's on this vehicle, and we'll put a link to that both in the description below and during uh, his overview of the interior, so make sure to watch that too. The Gladiator Rubicon is made to conquer nearly any terrain thanks to a variety of impressive equipment that heightens every measure of the legendary Jeep brand and its 4x4 capability. The Gladiator Rubicon is the most off-road capable mid-size pickup truck ever. This is the 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon 4x4. Now, on the Gladiator, there are four trim levels. You have the Gladiator Sport starting at 33,545, the Gladiator Sport S starting at 36,745, the Gladiator Overland starting at 40,395, and then you have the Gladiator Rubicon starting at 43,545. This particular Gladiator Rubicon is a launch edition and it's stickered at $62,310. This vehicle is powered by the 3.6 liter V6 24 valve uh, engine with sequential multi-port fuel injection. It produces 285 horsepower and 260 pound-foot of torque. There is an optional six-speed manual transmission with a 2.72 to 1 low-range transfer case. This particular vehicle has the optional eight-speed automatic transmission. Now up front, you see we do have the fully automatic headlights and daytime running lights, and this Gladiator actually has the LED lighting group. Okay, and with the LED lighting group, you have the daytime running lamps, LED accents, front LED fog lights, LED park turn lamps, LED reflector headlights, and of course out back you have the LED tail lights. Now this Gladiator also has a transmission skid plate and it has command track, part-time, four-wheel drive system. Yeah, the front suspension is five-link coil solid axle and the rear suspension is also five-link coil solid axle. Outside you have the heated power door mirrors and you also have uh, keyless entry. Then you've got underneath, you do have skid plates, you do have uh, anti-lock four-wheel disc brakes and they are heavy-duty brakes with uh, vented front and rear rotors. This vehicle is also equipped with electronic roll mitigation, electronic trailer sway control, and hill start assist with traction control. This vehicle has the safety group, which includes the blind spot and cross path detection, LED tail lights, as I said before, and the Park Sense rear park assist system. This vehicle also has the cold weather group, which features heated front seats, heated steering wheel, uh, and the remote start system. And Nathan will show you a little bit about those uh, heated seats and heated steering wheel on his review on the inside. This also does have the trail rail system here, and it does have an exterior 115 volt AC outlet and lockable rear under seat storage. And again, Nathan will show you that as well. There is also the auxiliary switch group, which this vehicle has, featuring a 240 amp alternator, 700 amp maintenance-free battery, and also auxiliary switches. Now, included options with this vehicle is the body-colored uh, three-piece hardtop. Inside, you have the 8.4 inch radio and premium audio group, and uh, it's an Alpine premium audio system. Up front, you have a steel front bumper, remote proximity keyless entry, integrated off-road camera, a hardtop headliner, trailer tow package, and a roll-up tonneau cover. Those are just some of the things in that group. This vehicle also has a Bluetooth wireless speaker inside, and it does have a sprayed-in liner. Now, on these wheels, these are the 17 by 7.5 granite crystal aluminum wheels wrapped in 33-inch LT28570R17C all-terrain tires, and they're beautiful. 
Okay, out back we'll see the bed floor is 60.3 inches with the gate closed. And the bed width at the tailgate is 56.8 inches. Let me get this out of the way here. And then the gate opening itself is 50 inches. Now between the two wheel humps, it's 44.8 inches wide. Now the bed is about 18 inches deep and it's got a reasonable lift over here with the uh, standard 33 inch tires. Not anything to really complain about. Now at the rear, uh, the open tailgate is about 35 inches from the ground. Now dropping the tailgate, as you see now, stretches the floor to about 81.3 inches. Now the gate will handle 600 pounds with a single ramp or 850 pounds with a pair of ramps. Now the tailgate in its half down position, which is achieved by simply looping both of these cables around the little brackets back here, uh, it will support up to 500 pounds as you see it with both cables there. Now the height uh, in that position also lines up with the top of the wheel bumps uh, and it helps to um, support and handle four by eight sheets of plywood. Okay, there are also pockets in the bed uh, halfway back then they're sized to secure two by sixes uh, to give you a little bit extra support for those sheets of plywood. Now, Jeep says that that arrangement can haul up to 11 sheets of three quarter inch plywood. Okay, there are also standard cargo lights in the bed and there is a 115 volt, four watt, 400 watt three prong outlet uh, that's available just inside. There are also, it looks like four uh, tie down loops too. The payload capacity when properly equipped is 1200 pounds and maximum towing is 7,000 pounds. Now, the Gladiator base weight with the automatic transmission is 5,072 pounds, and with the, uh, excuse me, with the manual transmission, it's 5,050 pounds. Okay, now the turning radius on this vehicle is only 22.4 feet. The wheelbase is 137.3 inches, the width 73.8 inches, and the overall height is 75 inches. Overall total length of the vehicle is 218 inches and the ground clearance is 11.1 inches. Now one of the cool parts about this is on the approach angle you're looking at 43.4 degrees and on the breakover angle you're looking at 20.3 degrees and out back on the departure angle it's 26 degrees. Now what does that terminology mean? Well the approach angle means how steep of a ramp, a rock, or a log a car can meet without actually scraping the front end. On the back side, conversely, the departure angle is similar to the approach angle, except related to having uh, to have left and leaving rather than approaching an obstacle. And then we go to the uh, the breakover angle. Now, the breakover angle is relates is similar. Uh, it relates to how big of a thing a vehicle can drive over without getting stuck and the breakover angle is related to the ground clearance, but not exactly the same thing. But of course, in all instances, the larger the, the uh, degree of uh, approach or departure or breakover, the better it is obviously for off-roading. Now on our scale of spade, this Rubicon uh, scores pretty high, S being safety. So it does have blind spot and cross path detection, anti-lock four wheel brakes, disc brakes, uh, electronic roll mitigation, uh, downhill assist, uh, all, and much more. Uh, then we've got uh, P for price. Uh, this is at 62,310, but again, she's loaded out as, to the gills. Uh, then we have A for appearance, uh, classic Jeep looks, open air fun. The only uh, open air off-road uh, off pickup truck out there. Dependability, we're looking at a basic warranty of 36 months, 36,000 miles, and it does have a powertrain warranty of 60 months, 60,000 miles. And then finally, uh, Spade, we've got E for economy. Uh, you're looking at 16 Highway 23 City, and uh, not bad for an off-road vehicle, V6, heavy vehicle, it's purpose-built off-road. 
Uh, so that's it. You know, Nathan's chomping at the bit. He wants to talk to you folks and show you uh, the technology and the, the coolness of everything that's inside. So I think, Nathan, I'll let you take it away. All right. You're all set to go. It's an it's a autumn day out here. The sun's setting on us fast. So why don't you go ahead and take it away and show everybody inside. All right. Come on inside. Let's take a look. It's awesome. All right. Stepping into the inside of the 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. Uh, this is what the door looks like. You got a nice uh, red stitching in the door uh, handle. You've got the netted uh, pocket below. It's designed to come apart, and we'll, I'll show you the kit in a little bit. But a few a uh, few bolts here and there, and off it comes. All four doors will remove. All right, and then moving it over here. Okay, so this is your lumbar right here. You can see it moving the seat. This raises or lowers your seat. This is your uh, seat back control, so you can tilt it. And then up here, you've got a bar that you can grab that tilts you forward uh, or backwards. All right, that being said, we have up here, we have the light switch here. This is your uh, fog lamp here. And then this is your, your uh, uh, outer lights, your rear bed lights. And then this just does have auto lights on it. Dashboard dimming right here. And then right here, you have got uh, your um, LED, indoor LED lights. Okay. Down here, you have a power switch for your 150-volt uh, uh, AC plug-in in the cargo area. Okay, so stepping on the inside of the 2020 Gladiator Rubicon Edition, wow. this right here controls your driver information center. You've got an RPM gauge along with your four high, four low, four neutral. All right, over here, you've got your speedometer. All right, so then uh, you've got your phone on, you've got your phone off, and then you've got your voice command. So over here on this side, you got all your cruise control buttons, on, off, and then of course, cancel, set, resume, and set positive. Okay. So over here is your adaptive cruise control. You can turn it at on by just clicking there. Then you can set Increase or decrease the gap by clicking there. Okay, this is a tilt and telescoping wheel, but it's on the inside here. Okay, right here. And then if we move over a little bit, this is the infotainment screen. So uh, just a really neat system uh, that uh, Jeep has put in here. So suffice it to say that this is um, an eight-speaker sound system. And it is um, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Bluetooth capable. It's got a nice sound system. This also comes equipped with the premium Alpine sound system. Down here, you have some physical controls for your infotainment screen, as well as the start button right here. So you got power on, off, you got volume. Over here, uh, you have got um, tuning and browsing. And this does come with a heated steering wheel one of my favorites you got front and rear defrost you got heated seats right here of course here's your it's dual zone auto climate control so there's that off fan speed auto and then you have your hazard button right here over here is all the passenger stuff plus the modes and the ac button underneath that you've got a mute button to mute the stereo which i like you have your, your auto start stop on or off button here, trash control here, parking sensors you can turn on or off for here, and this is your select speed uh, when you're off the trail, and uh, that way you can set your speed whether you're going up or down, um, you know, uh, according to the conditions. Or off, and then I really like this when when manufacturers have started to do this, but you can turn your screen on or off. Okay, down here I love this because this is actually where your power windows are, and then this one is your window lockout. Yeah, you do have a 12 volt accessory plug right there. You do have another plug for media here. This is where you would plug in for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay along with a 3.5 millimeter jack. Down here, you do have some auxiliary switches that Jeep has thrown in that aren't necessarily hooked to anything, but we've seen this before in some off-road vehicles where they, they actually give you accessory switches so that when you wire your um, aftermarket products in, that you already have a nice, neat area to put them to. So that's really nice. 
Down here, of course, is where you would access locking your differentials. So up here is locking front and rear, and then down is locking rear only. Here you have the button to disconnect the sway bar, and then you have the off-road plus mode right there. This is your actual shifter right here. Okay, so you have it's a manual, a two high, four high, neutral, and four low. And then on the shifter itself, you just got a little push button in the front here that allows you to then move the shifter once you put on the brake. I love all the little Jeeps they put on here. Okay, uh, back here you, of course, have, let me move this out of the way, you do have dual cup holders along with what would be, I would assume, a cell phone holder right here. You do have the hand-operated emergency brake. And then up here you've got your uh, center armrest storage area. And down here, you've got USB plug-ins. And I don't know if you can see my hand here, but there you go. So it is backlit. If you notice here, we kind of got a big tray right here, and, you, and the whole armrest is up. So if I put this down, and I grab just the top button, you'll notice that I've got another storage area. Uh, a lot of the materials in here are soft touch. I mean, you, you know, from the dashboard up here, even... Even this stuff around all the gauges, that's soft touch too, okay? This is a little bit of, this is a harder plastic, but but they've given it that, that soft edge. Uh, so it's not like a completely hard plastic. It's like an, it's upscale from, from, from that, okay? And then you've got this beautiful handle over here. Um, and then, of course, your air vents, which you just push to open and close, and then you just grab and rotate. Hey, right, the glove box is down here, so let's take a look at that. And there you go. You've got uh, ample storage here. It is not as wide as what you'd normally expect, say, in a pickup, but you do have quite a bit of space. Okay, so two items in here that, that are besides the owner's manual that, you, that are worth mentioning here. Okay, is this little handle, and that is, uh, don't throw that away, because it actually is a handle to help take out the... Um, would be, I think, the front window windshield here. Okay. So, but also, I said Jeep provides you with tools, and here they are. Right here. So, if we open them up, then you can see where they are. Up here, you do have an automatic dimmy rear view mirror. Up here, you just have your safety assist and SOS buttons, as well as your passenger airbag indicator. Uh, in case it's inflated or not, depending on how much weight it's in there. You do have your home link buttons right here. And then if you put down the visor, you'd actually have LED lighting on the mirrors. And of course they are telescoping on both sides. Now, one of the things that's really unique about, uh, of course, the Gladiator is that it all comes apart. I mean, the whole cab does. So I'm not going to do that, obviously, but here you can see some of the um, connections that would need to come off. So you need to take, oops, you need to take this off. You need to take that one, rotate it. You need to rotate this one, push that one down, and basically the panel comes up. All right, so over here on the passenger side, you see it mimics the driver's door uh, with the same netting and, and the uh, physical unlock and lock buttons along with the power ones. But then on the passenger side, I wanted to show you the seat here is uh, got your tilt, back tilt. Okay, pull that and you can tilt the seat. And then you got your forward back button. But it doesn't have the up, down, or the uh, lumbar support. All right, and coming up to the back door of the 2020 Gladiator Rubicon Edition here. You notice we got a little door pocket down here with the netting. And then your handle with a nice red stitching. And then, of course, the chrome open handle and the lock on lock buttons. What I like about these doors, and I commented it on the front, is the fact that um, they're all designed to come off. So the parts, no, nothing's on them that can't come off, like your window switches and stuff. All right, so here's just a view of the back. You've got the sound bar on the top with your LED lighting. And then, of course, you have dual seat pocket uh, right here. And then back here, you've got your air vents, your window controllers. And again, they're here, located here so that when you take your door off, you're not disconnecting any wires. And then over here, you've got uh, USB um, outlets. And there's quite a few of them. There's two C's and two regulars. So that's more than I've ever seen before. That's a lot. 
Okay, and then of course down here you have a 115 volt, 400 watt household plug-in along with two cup holders right here. And this center part pulls down as an armrest and a set of cup holders. Hey, the seats themselves, you just grab right on the edge and pull them up and they, they'll, they'll click in place. And then down here you have some storage. So back here you've got your, your some of your jack, your jack and then the extension arms for it. But then right here, you've got additional storage. If you take right here and grab and pull out, then you can open up and you've got more storage right in here, okay? And then move this out of the way. And then you can see it goes underneath this seat as well. So this seat has the same thing. This does have a manually open and closing uh, rear window. And then you do have adjustable headrests. My favorite thing is the forward-facing camera. I like it because, well, hopefully you're off-roading with this and then you can you can see some of the stuff you're, you're about to go over. But if you're not, if you're in a shopping mall, you can see what's, you know, what's the lines that you're pulling into, cars ahead of you, that kind of stuff. Very nice, useful feature. Love it. Okay, so for my favorite thing, you're looking at it from bumper to bumper, top to bottom, you name it, everything all-inclusive, this Jeep, Gladiator Rubicon in total is my favorite thing. If you're in the mall shopping lot, if you're in the mall parking lot, if you're in the shawl farfing farfing flaw, let me try that again. I really like the backup camera. <laughs> Bloopers!